What an honor for me to have you here, Phil Liggett. Uh, Phil, here at Interbike, you're the first person we've had a chance to talk to. It's always great to see you here, but you must be incredibly busy. It's been a good week, I must say. Um, I've just come down from Canada where I did this charity ride with Lance Armstrong called the BC Cancer Foundation. It was hard, believe me. <laughs> Boy, it was hard. Lance doesn't take prisoners. It was 80 kilometers on very hilly course up in Kelowna uh, on the uh, Saturday. Then we flew down in Lance's plane down to Vancouver. Met the Premier on the bike again for 100K. Wow. And uh, we finished up raising $1.6 million. So it was a terrific weekend for cancer. So, Phil, a lot of people, you know, we see you from all the way, you know, in January you're working at the Tour Down Under. Yeah. You're still here working. How many days a year are you on the road right now? Uh, if my wife's not around, <laughs> then we're looking at over 200. <laughs> wow. And so, you know, another thing I don't think a lot of people know about you is you spend a fair amount of time in Africa when you're not at the races. I do. And when will you be back there? I'm hopefully going to go back mid-November. And uh, I actually present the Cyclist of the Year Awards, which is a fabulous job because... I've, I've done it for the last five or six years, and I've watched the young cyclists develop. And now Robbie Hunter's won the stage of the Tour de France this year. Uh, and uh, I've seen Cherise Taylor get a silver medal in a world championship, never been done before by a junior. So they're, they're coming good, and I enjoy that. It's a, it's a DJ do. And then uh, after that, I do a couple of videos, and then I take time out for about a week. And then I go down to Cape Town. My wife flies in. We stay two more weeks in Cape Town, home for Christmas for the first time for... I think probably 10 years, and then to Australia, and it all starts again. And you know, I mean, it really, I have to say, in, in my uh, experience uh, being around you at races, it's overwhelming the popularity that you have here in America. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with the Tour de France coverage and how that race mm -hmm. really has grown here. But you know what it really seems like, Phil? You love what you do. Well, I certainly love what I do. Um, and the popularity, well, I'm just so happy they don't throw tomatoes at me. But <laughs> I have to say that people are so nice they say it's just nice things and uh, and I just don't know what the secret is but I'm very happy I've got it when did you really realize that this was what you wanted to do with your life uh, I mean uh, uh, you were a promoter originally weren't you with the milk race going back to you know we're talking about the mid 70s yeah. when did it really strike you that this is my this is my calling here well I never decided it happened for me I was a young cyclist like everybody else and I remember a young girl in the cycling group once saying you talk an awful lot you should write a book <laughs> and I was 17 at the time. I said, never even thought about it. Well, uh, as it happens, I've written five books. But uh, then I, um, I became a, tried to become a pro in Belgium, got the contract. At the same time, I was offered a job as a journalist. And they, they said, you can't race. And so although I did race for a bit longer, I couldn't race at pro level. So I started the journalism. And then I went to events, and nobody was commentating on riders and telling people who they were. So I picked up a microphone and somebody heard me and said, hey, would I like to do this race, that race, just like you did. Yeah, yeah. And then um, TV offered me a job and then I never asked for a job again. Well, you yeah. know, and was there a Phil Liggett before Phil Liggett? No. I mean, isn't that sort of bizarre? What did they do at that point? I mean, there, there was no English language coverage? No English language coverage and no cyclist in my family. I came from an unsporting family where we didn't hear our motor car. And I used the bike purely to get from A to B and go fishing. Uh -huh. And then I just said, I just want to be a professional. I want to be like these guys who wear leather jackets and look really cool and uh, make money as well. And I never quite made that, but I shot off at a tangent. And, and I've enjoyed meeting these people now since, uh, God, since 19... 67. Wow. Well, you know, Phil, I just want you to know. I mean, the 40 years. That's, that's amazing. My, my 40 40th years. anniversary. Yeah, that's <laughs> incredible. And you have done so much for the sport here in America, and I, I hope that you do. I mean, you, you, you should feel this love from the, from the, uh, you know, everybody who's following the sport in America really does appreciate what you've done. So, genuine thank you. Well, it's so, so nice you to say that, Dave. But I've watched the people grow up from a sport that nobody knew existed here in America in the days of John Howard and John Alice, two great bike riders from Boston and Texas. I gave them a ride in my race I was promoting at the time, which was the 12 day milk race, which I did for 22 years. And I watched the Americans really mature in that event till they won it with Matt Eaton back in the early 80s, 83 from memory. And uh, now, of course, they dominate the Tour de France. So they've, they've gone forward. I have to say the Brits haven't moved too far. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks a lot for your time, Phil, and I hope you have a great show. Thanks very much. I'm sure I will.